Hey, this is Pastor Nick Gillespie from the Grace Baptist Church. Thank you for tuning in to our Bible study series on the Gospels. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's an encouragement. I'll see you at the end of the video. All right, I'm just going to have you turn to everything. You ready for that? And if you're not ready for that, that's fine. If you want to just stick in one place, you would probably be safe in John chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for our time tonight. Pray that bless us as we meet. Uh, Lord, we want to learn. We want to uh, apply what we learn. Lord, pray and help us as we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A couple of interesting things happened in the last couple of well, not major, uh, but I have been alerted to a bunch of paperwork from the American Legion that's in the American Legion office that I always assumed was DAV. Because DAV has nothing to do with me. That was Ryan. Did you catch that? And so there are meeting minutes going all the way back to 1960. And so I'm going through the stuff, scanning it, making it digital, and we're throwing it away. Getting rid of stuff. We're already in that level for the building. Um, you know, we're going to be selling some stuff, yard sales, garage sales, you know, fire sales eventually, whatever it takes. But we're not in a hurry on anything. Just take care of the small things. But in this file, I found so much history. I uh, found pictures of when they first uh, paid off this building in 1953. It was built in 1949. Uh, I have the newspaper articles now. I have the pictures. Uh, they burned the mortgage on this in four years. Um, and then as I was looking at all that, seeing the different configurations, because over on the other side, that the nursery was built in 1973 for $3,700. Um, just a bunch of crazy stuff. And then if any of you know what the American Legion Auxiliary is, that's the women who make the sandwiches, right? Already kind of an outdated concept. <laughs> I know some of you are all for that. Uh, but since I joined the American Legion here in 2004, and from that time to now, there's never really been an auxiliary. Uh, we used to have a closet over there, and when we took that over, I was told that's the auxiliary's closet, but they're probably not coming back. I found the notes. The commander sent out a, a letter to everybody in 2000 telling them we need to stop the bickering. Everybody's sick of it. Nobody's come to the meetings anymore because of this. Wow. And, I mean, there's a pile of paper that I can't go through. Uh, but, well, could. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have somebody from the American Legion just go through and sum it all up. Found pictures. That back room over there, it's what now our team, beginner room, whatever that is right there. And how that used to work into the bar that was over there. The bar was facing that way. And it's a pretty cool, pretty cool pictures in there. Um, people in this room in 19, come to find out 53. Uh, just a bunch of stuff. And then it hit me. I'm like, these people went through all this. Should I not, as the commander, should I not be selling the building? But then I thought, no. We owe it to them to make the American Legion vital again and, you know, something that's alive again and uh, not just dying off. We're going to have to change the way we think. We're going to have to go to the new building. We're going to have to do something. You know, both organizations are going to be growing and thriving, uh, but there's a bunch of cool stuff in there. So I thought that was pretty cool to see. Um, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk tonight about Jesus healing from a distance. And when we talk about some of these things, I think it'll be uh, kind of a fun little lesson. So far, we've covered, you know, Jesus gaining fame in the last few weeks. Jesus turning water into wine. And remember, we covered, you know, I have a lot more Bible to say that that really was grape juice. And not, you know, remember the Old Testament, grapes picked off the vine were still wine. And uh, so unfermented completely, I'm convinced of it. But we talked about wilderness after baptism. We talked about Jerusalem, the temple, Nicodemus. Uh, going through Samaria and now back to Galilee. Let's pick up here Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. Now I'm going to have to explain a few terms as we teach this. Do you all want this air conditioner off or on? On. Good. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate that. <clears throat> all right, look at Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. Now this verse is one of the keys to the Sermon on the Mount. Remember, the Sermon on the Mount starts with the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 goes all the way towards the end of Matthew chapter 8. And if you follow these teachings of Jesus to the letter, you will walk out thinking that you have to work your way to heaven. You will think that, you know, if, if I don't do these certain things, I don't get to go. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 frames it. Now watch this. 
from that time Jesus began to preach and say and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand the kingdom of heaven it's interesting because you have the kingdom of God you have the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven is talking about everything in this heaven we're talking about heaven we use the Bible to determine what the Bible says right so when the Bible talked in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth singular. It's talking about the atmosphere. It's not talking about everything outside of it. It's talking about everything on the atmosphere and on the inside. So anytime you read kingdom of heaven, it's always talking about earth. And I know it sounds backwards, but it's talking about the heaven surrounding earth. And so thus earth. So when he's talking about the kingdom of heaven as a hand, he's talking about the millennium here. So now understand this, the kingdom of heaven is earth. It's only mentioned in the book of Matthew. It's not mentioned anywhere else. So there's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is everything. It's an umbrella term. The kingdom of heaven fits within the kingdom of God. Does that make sense? Kingdom of heaven here. Kingdom of God's everything. It can't, isn't easy to define. Jesus says, hey, kingdom of God is within you. Well, how can it be within me if it's not yet? You know, it, it's just a more general term. So, uh, I'll just read to you Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. So there's a gospel of the kingdom of God. Might be slightly different than the gospel that we know. You only get saved one way. We know this. From Adam to the last person that dies on this planet, everybody gets saved the same way. By faith, by grace, through faith. It's the only way. But however, what was the gospel before Jesus rose from the dead? 1 Corinthians 15 tells us the gospel is the death, battle, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what was it before that? Their, their, their belief was a little bit more general. We believing in a coming Savior, right? So the Old Testament... You know, how can you read the Old Testament and come away definitively? Oh, yeah, this guy's going to raise from the dead. And he can't do it. Okay, we look back and say, oh, I see it now. And so that's why, the, why God says he winked at their ignorance. It's a belief in the coming Savior. You know, just all started with Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, 16. And I, I will, uh, I, talking about seed of the woman, I will bruise, he, sorry, again, notes, he will bruise uh, your heel. His heel, he shall bruise your head. In other words, Satan will be able to bruise the heel of Christ at crucifixion, but Jesus will raise from the dead, and there will be a fatal blow to Satan eventually. Now, you don't get that when you look at it, right? But we look back now and see it. So when John's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, gospel of the kingdom of God, it's still the gospel. It's still the belief in Christ. That's the only way we're saved. But we don't, we're not talking about the resurrection yet. At this point, matter of fact, we're talking kind of about the coming millennium. There is still plan A, and it's going to be hinted to also in a moment. I need to explain what plan A is. Okay, so plan A, the way it originally was supposed to happen, was that the Jews were supposed to repent at the preaching of John the Baptist. They were supposed to repent and accept the teaching of Jesus Christ, and they were supposed to rent, repent at the stoning of teaching of Stephen. Instead, they beheaded him, they crucified him, and they stoned him to death, the three different people. And so they rejected the kingdom, and they moved on, and God then switched over from a Jewish church, reaching the world through Israel. Now we're going to reach him through the Gentiles, we're going to organize the church to do it. Remember, the church isn't a replacement of, Jew, of, of the Jews or Israel. No way. We're not the same thing. The Passover is not the same as the Lord's Supper even though one was instituted on the same night, right? It was eating the salt after dinner. And so plan A should have been them accepting, but we know this wasn't going to happen anyways, them accepting, and then Daniel's 70th week has to fit in there somewhere, but then the millennium happening soon thereafter. We know that didn't happen because here we are now 2,000 years later. So what happened was that's when Paul talks about the mystery. I speak of concerning the church. The church was a mystery. And that, it's a, you know, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit was a, was a uh, mystery. But Paul talks about it. So the church is a mystery, and that's what it's referring to. So now that's why we have a Gentile church. It's why, you know, it started out as a Jewish church, but now it's Gentile. You know, it started in, whether you want to say Matthew chapter 10, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 10, whatever you want to say, 
but it started with the Jews, but now it is a Gentile organization. And the verse 15 is saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Remember, repent is talking about changing your mind. It's not talking about stopping sinning. All right, Luke chapter 4. That's one of the places I told you to flip. Let's go ahead and flip over there. And pick up the story there. All right, Luke, John chapter 4. That just said Luke chapter 4. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught their synagogues, being glorified at all, of all. So Jesus is now returning to Galilee. And then we find in John chapter 4, verse 43, that's probably where you want to turn. I think it's pretty safe to do that. And verse 43, John 4, 43. Now after two days he departed thence and went to Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. He said this actually a couple times. And he was telling people, hey, you know, it, you know, if you use an illustration, you'll all understand. Remember when Ryan comes back to the office, gets his hair tussled? Yeah. It's because a vice president out of the same office is not well received. I grew up here in Springfield. I thought, you know, hey, at least people I went to high school with, you know, let's make sure my name's on the website. Let's make sure my name's out there so people see it. You know, maybe so they'll recognize it and maybe come to church. It hasn't happened, but maybe twice in 20 years. Matter of fact, I remember knocking on doors. It was Eden, I forget her maiden name, it's now Eden Bowman. No, Bowman wasn't her middle name, or her maiden name. And uh, knocking on doors, talking about fourth and I said, hey, pastor of church. And I said, you, pastor of church. And it wasn't because I was a jerk or anything. I just, you know, in high school, I tried to be everybody's friend as much as I could. It was just, you're a pastor. And uh, so that, you know, doesn't really work. It appears to be an odd statement, proves to be true, and we're going to find that out in a moment. All right, verse 45, if you're in John chapter 4. <clears throat> now watch this. So he's going to heal this person from afar. And when he was in, uh, coming to Galilee, let's talk about Galilee real quick, shall we? So here we have Galilee. And uh, right, okay, so I'm assuming you can see the red dot. Okay. So now I have to turn around because here you see Cana right about in the middle. Nazareth over here to the left. Nazareth would have been where Mary and Joseph, you know, where Jesus was born. Oh, you know, it's also where the wise men met him. But I see it there to there. Cana of Galilee, where the fur where Jesus turned water into wine. And then you see at the top of the Sea of Galilee, you see Capernaum. So those are the three things we need to know. Okay. I'm an idiot. That only works when you're using it on the proper system. Here, why don't we do it this way? Here's Cana. <laughs> this only works on the computer. I'm using my iPad. There's Cana. There's Nazareth. Up here, Capernaum. Now this distance right here, well this one to this one, we look at that, that's only 25, 30 miles. It's not a long job there. Uh, so you have Cana here and you have Capernaum. So Jesus right now, well, let's go ahead and keep going here. That was in Jesus' time. This would be now, Upper Galilee, Lower Galilee. Here you see Mount Carmel, you see Jordan, Golden Heights. Um, and so that's what it looks like now. So continuing with Galilee, remember Galilee is a large region. But I show you these pictures because I want you to know this place is real. This is not, you know, some fairy tale that was just thrown into a book. Galilee is a real place. Here's an orchard in Galilee. Here's a tourist place you can go. And if I remember right, it's called the Cave of the Arch. Uh, again, not my notes. But you see people up at the top there. I don't think I can zoom. Here's another area, area over there. Using Pastor Matt's word, uh, maybe a little arid area when you're talking about the weather. Another shot from another town, looking over the valley there. And then here is Capernaum, overlooking the Sea of Galilee. I don't know why I said it, Galilee, it's Galilee. And then here is the church 
of the Annunciation. See this, if I were to go to Israel, this would be my problem. So this is where the Annunciation happened. This is where Gabriel told Mary that she was about to have a child born of a virgin and all that stuff. That happened right here and they built the church over it. And, but whatever. And so then, you know, also let's just go ahead and pick this up. Let's hit some historical things. So we know this name as a Roman client ruler. This is straight off of Wikipedia. Herod Antipas, the Tetrarch of Galilee. We talked about how evil that man was from 4 BCE to 39 CE. See, that's what cracks me up. It's BCE. So you put an E after it, you know, before Christ, before Christ event, because, you know, you don't want to sound religious. You're still acknowledging Christ. To acknowledge Christ and then not believe him still is one of the dumbest things you can do. So changing to BC, you know, BC to BCE just really increases the stupidity, in my opinion. Uh, then you see CE instead of AD, which any of many year of our Lord was permitted to mint his own coinage. And so that was inside of Galilee. Here is an old painting, not from Jesus' time, of the drought of fishes, Sea of Galilee. And every time I see this, though, I just have to wonder, is the guy on the right-hand side just trolling his friends? Is he just poking people with sticks? What's the world's going on over there? Yeah. Jesus is distracted. You're over there poking your friends and pushing them in the water. Yeah. Well, and you know, you look at those boats. It's not like, you know, Jesus and fishermen, they're bringing up fish and they're in little cat, what, what are those bees, kayaks? These were professional fishermen. They weren't just on kayaks. But I don't have a picture of it, so I can't prove people, these people wrong. Okay. So, <clears throat> then when he was come to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast. So all the people who were in Galilee were in Jerusalem at the same time. And they also went to the feast in Jerusalem. So we've gone from Galilee to Jerusalem to back. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee. Let's go back over here. So you see it there, I zoomed in a little bit for you. Where he made the water, uh, water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose uh, son was sick at Capernaum. Now this story, to me, is a fun one. About 20, 16 some odd miles away, it's about a six hour walk. Imagine walking from here to Creswell. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that. But that's approximately the walk that we have here. And uh, probably why they're in a little bit better shape than us if they were. And so look at verse 47. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went up unto him. And he went unto him, sorry. And saw him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Remember, up and down, when we're talking in the geography of the Gospels, up is talking about elevation. Down is talking about sea level. So everything's up to Jerusalem because Jerusalem is the highest one of the highest elevated capitals in the world. Everything else is down below. Of course, you have the highest there, and they have the Dead Sea. So, but the Dead Sea's down anyways to the south. But if you're going from Jerusalem to south here to Capernaum, you're going down to Capernaum, right? Okay. So basically, this man walks up to Jesus and says, hey, walk to Cresswell with me. You think Jesus wants to walk to Cresswell? I don't think he does. Look at verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The noble said to him, Sir, come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, way thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken to him, and he went his way. That's faith. Right? You know, because if Jesus said that to me, would I be like, Well, could you just come down to be sure? You know, this is my kid we're talking about. I've walked all this way. Would it kill you to walk down there? Jesus looks up. Nah, he's healed. Go. I don't, I don't feel like going to press one right now. So it's interesting, though, when you read now about what this guy did next, that really what faith is. Look at verse 52. Then acquired he... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We skipped ahead. Verse 51. And as he was not now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. So his servants met him. When you picture that, you think, hey, it's just right outside the house, right? You know, they just come up to the gate, and the servants met him. Look at verse 62. Then inquired he of them the hour which, uh, when he began, began to amend. And they said unto him, 
yesterday at the seventh hour and the fever left him. Yesterday. This guy took his time to go back. You know what he did? He's up there. He's up there in Capernaum. He's uh, on his way. I'm sorry. He's uh, down uh, closer to Cana, heading back to Capernaum. You know what? He's stopping at the shops. He's shopping. He's sightseeing. You know, because if it's you or me, what are we going to do? First, try to convince Jesus to come to our house. Then second, we're going to rush home to make sure. Because you know what? I know where Jesus is. I know where my kid is. I need to rush home to make sure he's healed. And then if he's not, I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to have a little chit chat with this guy. We're coming, we're coming in hot with social media. We're coming in hot. We're going to get a video of this guy. That's not what happened. His servants met him. And he was still that far away from his house. So the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said it, my son loved it. And he and himself believed in his whole house. And uh, so he already believed in a miracle, but now he's believed in Christ and his house is as well. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he's come out of Judea into Galilee. So the second miracle in Cana. Remember the first was water and wine. And uh, you know, because there's other miracles in this meantime. There was plural when John when uh, when um, John chapter three, Nicodemus came to Jesus. The only recorded miracle was water into wine, but yet Nicodemus said the miracles. We know that God has sent you. And yet some of them still didn't believe, which is the ultimate in stupidity. All right, let's talk about Capernaum. No, I'm sorry, Nazareth. Um, there you go. That's what Nazareth. That's the town that Jesus grew up in. It wasn't that bustling back when Jesus walked those streets. There was no cars. There's the chariots, maybe. Uh, if those are terracotta roofs on there. Yep. And so you know, it's probably that the uh, modern architecture wasn't this way. The air conditioning units on the roofs probably weren't there. But the hill, it's a real place. And then you see this right over here on the right. That on the left is the well, St. Mary's Well. On the right, I believe, is another. I wish I remembered this a little bit better. And there is an old painting from 1839, I believe it is, overlooking Nazareth. A little bit smaller. See, less bustling. There you go. Okay, so that there is the second miracle. We have about 10 minutes. So Jesus now speaks in his hometown. Let's go back to Luke chapter 4, if you would, please. So I hope you all understand even slightly this whole thing about the, the kingdom of heaven should have happened back then, plan A, plan B. Even if you understand it just barely, that's fine. But Jesus is also Jesus hints at it all throughout Scripture. And matter of fact, one of those times has come up here in John, I'm sorry, in Luke chapter 4. Let's pick up here in verse 16. So now Jesus, for the first time, is back in his hometown. He has spoken in the synagogue before, but now he's going to be a little different. Look here, well, not different. He's going to, you know, the message is going to be portrayed different. Luke chapter 4, pick up verse 16. So Jesus just told us, a prophet is not without honor except his own uh, area. Verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read, which was their custom as the stand when they read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. Now look at verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now look at verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This comes right off of Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. Now if you ever want trivia, my sermon is always placed in Isaiah 61, 
verses 1 and 2, but I, this new Bible, I love as much as I love it, the page faces away, so I have to make a purpose to look past that page. But you know, that should be our calling. That should be what we're doing. But I want to show you this on the screen. This is Isaiah 61, 1, with, Isaiah, with Luke that we just read up above. So, Isaiah 61, 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meat. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart of the proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now watch this in verse, six, uh, uh, verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. See where Jesus stopped? He was there the first time to do that. The second phrase is talking about labor. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, that period right there now becomes a comma and the day of the vengeance of our God to com comfort all that mourn. So the day of the vengeance of our God, Jesus there is leaving out in his lifetime. When you say lifetime, we're talking about human lifetime. We're talking about in his flesh. Even though, okay, well, I just got horribly off track dark doctrine. Jesus arose from the dead bodily. He's in heaven right now bodily. And uh, you know, so, okay, when I say that. So what I'm talking about is his, let's say, earthly ministry. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord is part of his earthly ministry. And the day of vengeance of our God is talking about tribulation. Huh. So Jesus here is already hinting at plan A, plan B. There's other times that he did it. Uh, um, have you heard this? John the Baptist is Elijah. And then later on, John the Baptist, I'm not Elijah. Was Jesus wrong? No. In one scenario, he was Elijah. And one he's not because the rejection is about to happen and the teaching was there for that. But then it but Isaiah, I'm sorry, Elijah still has to come back before the great terrible day of the Lord. That's why I late Elijah is one of the two witnesses at the tribulation. And so in the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort, I'm sorry, to comfort all that mourn. And uh, that will also be part of that. But so you see how Jesus stops the teaching at the end of Lord. And now watch what he does. Go back here to Luke chapter uh, 4. Luke chapter 4. verse 20. And he closed the book and he gave it, in, uh, gave it again to the minister and sat down. Now watch this. And all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. There's a couple reasons for this. First, he just cut off mid, you know, he just cut off mid verse. Oh, that's out of context. Out of context. Out of context. But then he sits down. Sit down and teach? What are you doing? And by the way, that's not talking about the church. It's talking about their, you know, if, you know, if we want to go ahead and start teaching sitting down, that's perfectly fine, by the way. Not going to do it. You know, somebody else might do it. I'm not going to. And, uh, but, that wasn't a day. I was just saying, you can do what you want. Um, but now watch this verse 20. He began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Because if he said the second part, it wouldn't have been fulfilled. Now watch the verse 22. And all bear witness and wondered at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? So gracious words out of his mouth. What's their reaction to his gracious words? They tried to kill him. You know, we think, man, just everybody's got to like us. They're not going to. You have to be okay with that. The founder of our religion was crucified because of what he taught. And you realize what I'm saying, founder of our religion. I'm not, you know, you get what I'm saying. I'm being sarcastic. But the founder of our religion, even with his gracious words, were crucified by the powers that be. And we think that we're going to come out here and preach the truth and everybody's going to love us. Even Jesus said, hey, you want to see them, those preachers with the with the velvet clothing? Soft raiment. Velvet clothing. With a soft raiment. They're in king's houses. You know, they have the big shots and big wigs going to their church. We don't. We're okay with that. I don't want big wigs. Okay, I'm going to back up. Just in case we're the big wigs here. I'm glad to have a big wig here anytime. <clears throat> but now watch what Jesus says. And he said to them, You will surely say to me in this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Um, and so that's talking about on the cross. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also hear in, our, in, in thy country. So again, mockery because he's not healing people there. And he said, uh, Verily I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Now he's actually in his country saying it. Before he said it from a distance. Now he's saying it there. 
But I tell you the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months. That's another reason. Elijah, two witnesses, three years, six months, 1,420 days. It, it just, it all works together. When, um, when great famine was throughout all the land, but only, but unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto uh, Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Leos, the prophet, Elisha, I'm sorry, Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. What did Jesus teach? He just said, hey, there's more lepers than Naaman. There's more widows than this woman of Seraphim. But they knew what he was teaching. It's the most amazing thing about Jesus Christ, that we can hear his teaching and be offended by it. And weren't they, um, they weren't Jewish little people. That's why they were upset as well, right? He was in a synagogue. There were Jews there. Yeah, but I think the names that he mentioned. Could be. Yeah. But he was in a synagogue. I mean, he was in a synagogue. Sorry, but yeah. it should not be Jews. And you know, remember, Jews had been dispersed and brought back as well. So they would have been, you know, still everywhere. Um. So they're filled with wrath. It's amazing. Okay. So what I'm saying then is that, you know, people are offended that Jesus says, I know if Jesus was just one of the ways to heaven, nobody would be offended by him. I'm just one of the ways. But they're offended because he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You know, people you know, say, hey, which God is it that we should be believing? The one you hate? The one you hate? You know, this is the one book that you don't want in classrooms. Why? Because it's the real one. And all it takes is a little submission. That's it. I must have hit something over there. All right. So Jesus is pointing out the people of that town are being left out, just as the others were. Jesus is hinting here still at plan A and plan B, and that they will be left out. And verse 29, rose up and thrust them out of the city, and led them into the uh, brow of the hill, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went his way. He just walked through. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day. So now he's just like, you know what? I'm not going to be in Nazareth. I'm just going to do my teaching over there. And so the next, Matthew 4, 13, I'll just read this to you. Leaving Nazareth, he came down and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, but in the borders of Zebulun and Neph uh, Nephthalim. And so going back to Craig, those are, in Matthew chapter 4, those are Jewish areas. That would still be uh, Jewish uh, tribe names. Uh, then it might be filled spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, uh, by the way, the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, thy people which sat in darkness saw great light, talking about Jesus Christ, and to them uh, which sat in the region in shadow of death, uh, in the shadow of death, light is sprung up. All right, so there we have Jesus healing from a distance, then going to his hometown and speaking and people not listening. Remember when he goes back and says, hey, if these miracles were done, you know, entire inside on them were done here, they repented. But because they did repent, because they got saved, they're going to stand in judgment in you. What's that talking about? I'm talking about millennium. Because we're not going to stand in judgment in heaven, right? We're not going to judge when people go to heaven and hell. But you know what we are going to do? The saved are going to stand in judgment of people who walk alive, a normal body, than the millennium. Totally different lesson there. Any questions? That was a long 35 minutes. Nothing. All right. It's required practice tonight, I assume, Joe. Very good. What's that? Oh, no, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Music team practice. Gotta watch out for that. And I guess that's it. So we'll go ahead and pray. We've got still a lot to do this evening. Um, staff meetings, all sorts of neat stuff. Uh, music team practice. I gotta get a video done. That's all gonna be good fun. So let's go ahead and pray. And we'll be just, Father, again, we're thankful for Congratulations. 
you've endured to the end, you made it to the end of the sermon, and I'm proud of you. Hey, my number's at the bottom of the screen here. Text me if you need anything. I hope to see you here sometime. Have a great day.